Still what? Still at Blockbuster? No, 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 no. I work for a <laughs> co-op, um, like a non a statewide nonprofit in Minnesota. Perfect. And not at Best Buy anymore. Just um, so all the listeners know, um, my running joke with Jerome, because it's always where in the world is Jerome? And I just tell everybody that he works at Blockbuster, which there's like maybe one or two still in existence. And Jerome is the CEO, oh CFO, and <laughs> so you're uh, marketing manager. To, you might have to repeat that because we haven't started the episode yet. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but I like where I your head is at. <laughs> I can definitely do it. One thing I hope you notice in this show is a sense of displacement. If you've been following along on YouTube, then over the span of the last four episodes, you've seen different backgrounds as I've painted the walls, repainted the walls, hung shelves, and so on. The asides or coffee breaks in these shows take place weeks after the conversations. So the show that you're experiencing during the conversation segment is always becoming the show that you experience during the coffee breaks. But that can lead to some weirdly timed episode releases. Case in point. In this conversation with Key West marketer and realtor Paul Brooks, we talk about and try to really sink our teeth into social media tools. How to use those tools to effectively lift up the content you love, hint, hint, and the impacts of social media on our mental health. That leads us to the topic of Donald Trump's use of social media, but at least as of this sentence, Donald Trump's presence on social media has been greatly reduced, which for the record, has had a noticeably positive impact on my personal mental health. Speaking of social media, Find us on Instagram at at Bottomless Coffee Podcast. We're there using the tool to support Alex from episode one, Rachel and the Love Labor Project from episode two, Aaron from episode three's Bop or Flop Podcast, and Michael from episode four's career as a performing artist. And after you connect with us on Instagram, please go and support our work by becoming a community member at patreon.com slash bottomless coffee. Hey everybody, welcome back to Bottomless Coffee. I'm Jerome. Today we're going to be talking a little bit more about social media uh, as a tool, um, why it causes anxiety, why it might cause exhaustion, and like the perspective of someone who advertises on social media versus someone who's like always consuming social media. Uh, and today I brought my friend Paul in to share a cup of coffee. Hi, Paul. Hi. Uh, now, if you're How are uh, you? listening on the podcast and not watching on YouTube, you can't see that Paul's coffee is enormous. Um, <laughs> it's got to be like, is that like 12 ounces of coffee? It's 14? definitely a large cup of coffee. It's And it's black. You. Uh, it's a, I would have done some like, cream and sugar, but I was definitely scrambling to make sure I had my everything set up for you. Aww. So, but yes, it is, I'm drinking a black coffee. Uh, Paul so. is very sweet. He's a good friend. He's the kind of friend that will scramble for you in the morning <laughs> if you need to. <laughs> just like, I'll scramble just anything, not eggs. Like, okay, there you go. That, that, but maybe eggs. If anyone's interested, in breakfast with Paul. Maybe that'll be your own YouTube show later on. Breakfast down the with road. Paul. <laughs> oh my God. Can it just be like me eating and just like telling everybody about my conspiracy theories or something? Oh, I think okay. Be... So we are not going to give a platform to any conspiracy theories. <laughs> <laughs> kidding, kidding. But it's kind of um, ironic that you mentioned that. Well, we're, we are going to talk about social media. I know, exactly. Yeah. So, um, so just so we're all on the same. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I spoke with someone, my old roommate, uh, Aaron Minkama, who um, suggested that I watch The Social Dilemma. There's like a small part of that conversation, um, which at large was about politics, but a little bit mm-hmm. about it 
was about um, social media and the way we communicate. And uh, Paul, uh, when we when I reached out to Paul about what we could talk about, social media came up uh, kind of serendipitously as a possible mm -hmm. topic of conversation. And Paul's a realtor in Key West. Is that right? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Yes. And I think realtors use social media like a lot. A lot. A lot, a lot. Like to the degree where, and I'm sure we'll dive into it more, but it's just like, I feel like social media is one of the largest components of my business. Oh, like wow. that in a way, and maybe not so much in the way, but as far as like my knowledge base of like, oh, I know how to sell homes and I know how to like uh, evaluate a market and tell you how to sell your home and get you to sold and walking you through that process, which is all in my, like, that's knowledge that I have. Yeah. But then so much of my business is based off of social media and like that networking aspect. Yeah. But obviously since COVID, you know, everything is done social, like via social media, we're not out having social interactions. And so everything I have to do is social media. And I, for one, like, I'm not a big social media person. Like, oh, I don't I know think, if that's true. <laughs> I, okay. I will say this. I, like, I'm a big social media person, like, but as far as, like, producing content mm. and trying, like, that is where I feel like I always flaw in my business because it, I'm like, oh, I don't want to do it because I'm like, I feel like that it's like that that privacy ex aspect of like, oh, I just want to like, like people's pictures and like, just be like, there you go. Here's some love for okay. you. So and, we are, I feel as though you are kind of hinting at the line between like using social media professionally mm -hmm. and using it in your personal life. And so... Um, you talked about content creation a little bit, which is an important component for both, you know, the business aspect and the personal aspect. Mm -hmm. um, and how you, you just kind of feel a little exhausted, it sounds like, when it comes to producing content for your business. Do you feel the same way when it comes to producing content for your, like, your personal uh, social media profiles? It's honestly both. Like, it's... Like... I'm like now thinking I'm like I don't want to say like all the time no. but uh, <laughs> with social media and creating content it's I actually was talking to a friend of mine um, okay. who I was getting a phone call um, but uh, I was talking to a friend uh, two of my friends, they're sisters, they both own a, like, nutrition company. One's a nutritionist, physical therapist, and the other is a, um, like, training. So they, what they do is they offer a lot of um, fitness videos sure. of, like, getting oh, in yeah. shape and, and like, yeah, and showing their journey. And, but the backing of theirs is that they are, um, the one sister is a licensed nutritionist and physical therapist. And so they do a lot of meal planning with people and programming for fitness goals and such. Mm -hmm. And I've talked to both of them on this subject as far as like, they kill it with their social media. Oh. And they, I was like, how do you do it? And my one friend, both of, one of them just like background was used to work at KPMG, which is like, KPMG is like a accounting firm. Oh, okay, sure. And so she is like, oh, everything I do is on a schedule. She's like, I literally have alerts and alarms of when to post and yeah. what to post. And like, it's just like a system of regimented things. Yeah. And she was like, I have to do that for myself. And then she was talking about her sister. She was like, my sister is the opposite of where she is just like, um, 
gets post anxiety, like goes to post something and is like, oh, I can't post this because it's not good enough. It's not. Oh, no. Yeah. And I'm the same way. And it's like that perfectionist side of me, which is, you know, whenever you go into an interview, it's like, never say that you're perfectionist. Yeah. Because it's like one, so many people look at that and they're like, oh, that's a good thing, but it's also a bad thing because a lot of times it's like, oh, they can't get something done unless it's perfect and they can't move oh, on. Sure, sure. And I feel that same way, especially with like social media. Like I hate, I don't hate, I get anxiety with posting and creating content and it's because for me, I'm like, oh, it's not perfect. It's not exactly what I want it to be. Mm-hmm. And so I'm not, I'm like, oh, I just won't post it instead. So, this is, I'm not sure about the best way to approach this, or this is the best segue, but earlier you mentioned that social media is really a tool, and Mm -hmm. that's kind of something that people miss about it. Um, When you are producing content and you're getting anxiety, is your feeling that you are not using the tool correctly? Or is it the feeling that you are not going to get the engagement out of the post that you want to get? Maybe it's more the engagement on the post yeah. than the, the tool itself. So but, this really speaks to what Aaron yeah. was talking about with the social dilemma. Mm-hmm. Um, the documentary Social Dilemma, in case anyone hasn't seen it, um, and I've only seen all like half an hour of it, to be fair. Um, it's, go it's good. It's, it's good. good. It's good. If you guys are doing a 13, 14 hour car ride, it's <laughs> something that you can just put in, like s- start watching it on Netflix and listen to it. Like so, somebody. Um, this is where I now have to put in a disclaimer saying do not watch Netflix while you are driving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Watch it while you are stationary, please. But or just listen about, to it. It talks about how um, social media companies use an algorithm that is designed to get you engaged in their platform mm-hmm. for as long as possible. Exactly. Right? Um, and, and so when your anxiety is kind of related to that platform in that what you're really thinking is that, oh, I'm not designing my content for the for the algorithm. The algorithm mm-hmm. is not going to show my content to as many people for X, Y, or Z reasons. Is yeah. That... Kind of. And well, also I think with marketing in, in general, this is just like a broad spectrum sure, of marketing. Sure. Marketing, the best marketing is marketing that is effective. That's yes. it. And like baseline marketing, if it was like you looked up marketing in the dictionary that's literally what the description should be <laughs> like it shouldn't be like exposing your business it's literally should be marketing is the only effective marketing is effective marketing, uh, effective marketing. <laughs> yeah. and so it is that engagement so literally if you know as my business let's take my personal side off of it let's okay. just say my my business side if i am not posting things that's engaging to people, then I'm not doing my job as a real estate agent or a realtor um, because I'm not posting effective marketing. So if I'm trying to say like, I need, you know, not that I need, but in selling a home, the things that you need is you need as many people as possible to see that home to get as many qualified buyers Mm. to come in and want to purchase that home. And so that's baseline my business is I have to have engagement. And so it's like trying to create and stay up with these trends that are constantly changing to get more post engagement. But to be clear, you have to have that engagement because without that engagement, your post will not be shown to mm-hmm. more people. Exactly. Um, now, alternatively, or in addition to creating content that gets engagement, you could also pay um, your social media platform to show your mediocre content or even bad mm-hmm. content to people. And that's exactly. the business of social media. And that's what's 
Yeah, and that's what's terrible because there are so that's in my business. There's so many other agents that just like there's an agent currently. I'm like, God, let's hope she doesn't listen to this. You don't I'm not have saying to name her. I'm not naming names, <laughs> but is literally sponsoring ads on Facebook right now. Just any video that she posts, yeah. like this is like a ten minute ad, like a ten okay. minute sponsored post. Okay. Like that's what? Right. <laughs> Yeah, no, exactly. That's literally not great at all. Like, that's terrible. And, but she is paying. So I am, like, seeing her stuff pop up on my feed. Exactly. Because she's paying for it. And I'm just like, ugh, like, this is not good. But inevitably. But you see her name. And, so, and you yeah, the and so, like, yeah. essentially that's effective. Like, yeah. in essence, it's like, that is effective marketing because people are seeing it and people are engaging with it. But is it, yes. like, necessarily good? No. Which is, like... Well, but here's another thing. So you get that anxiety about the content that you create. A lot mm -hmm. of people do not. They, they say, oh, I have five extra dollars to put my name in front of people's eyeballs. And I don't care if it's me with my shirt pulled up over my head, running around, leaving my arms. Yeah. Uh, what's important is that... Um, I show up on people's social media profiles. And um, I think this is pr probably a larger conversation, but it really plays into the idea that if you've already got money and you've already got the capital, then you get a major leg up in the social media game just from the game. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and and that's just with advertising and using the platform in the way that it's designed to be used. Like, and any tool, there are certainly ways to manipulate it to your own ends um, if you've got either the skill or the money to do so. And the other thing is, is I have a mortgage lender that I work with and mm -hmm. she is amazing at social media. And so I'm also part of um, real estate coaching. And the big thing that is promoted in real estate coaching is like, you don't need to pay for advertisements. Like, you, no, really. you really don't. Um, they're like, you should. You should do it because it's good It's good post engagement because it is going to give that algorithm to show it to more people. Mm -hmm. If you pay for it, it will. But at the same time, if you're posting content that people are engaging in, you're, it's effectively free marketing, which is sure. such a huge benefit about social media. And... One of my lenders that I work with, she is just amazing about it. She moved down to the Keys only like three years ago, and she created a Facebook page that now, I don't, I mean, this, it grows daily, mm. but it has like over 50,000 followers on it that she grew organically. How do, how she, do you know that she grew it organically? Because she told me, she just... She was like, I was like, please tell me if you're lying. And she was oh, like, okay. I'm not. Um, I was like, she was like, I'm not. She was like, I've maybe sponsored a few ads here and there. She was like, but honestly, the content that I have produced, people just share it. Mm. Because it's, I mean, we live in a beautiful island. and That's true. And so it's, it's easy to share that content. And so it's like, it's people want to share it. Because it's like, look at this nice, beautiful island picture. And... So that's what she does. And she just gets people that share her, like, she creates funny memes about her job. And oh, she gets leads from that. People share. People love Yeah. Them. Yes. And so she has created this, like, amazing business that she, through marketing of, like, and free. She's doing this all for free. Or which goes back into, like, that social media tool. Mm -hmm. Being social media, using it as a tool and a platform where you can grow a business and i'm like and i have so many stories i mean of friends that also are small business owners that use their use instagram instagram is their like mm -hmm. they sell vintage wares and um they've killed it i i checked the other day and they have like over ten thousand followers and to the point where i've had other friends be like, wait, you're hanging out with, I, I'll tag them. I'm like, it's at Lost Hunt, at Lost Hunt Vintage. 
They're like, oh, you're friends with them? And I was like, oh, I was there when they started this business. I was like, like, I was there before they were cool. Yeah. Um, but, listen, well, hold on. Since it is marketing, ahead. we're talking about social media. Maybe you should share your your tag, your oh. uh, Instagram and everything uh, before yes. you promote other people. I'm like, everybody before <laughs> me. Um, I have... This we were talk. This is something that we were talking about before, but it's like the amount of social profiles that I have. Yeah. Um. My I have two Instagrams. So my real estate Instagram is at p brooks realtor. That's it for that one. Okay. And then my personal Instagram is at insta underscore brooks. So okay. they can go follow me there. One's more fun, and the other one is more like beautiful pictures of Key West and more artsy glamour. We love Maybe that. not glamour. It's just more artsy and pretty. <laughs> um, more curated. That's a vibe. That's mm -hmm. a vibe. So um, my social media, I have a pro maybe a heavier presence on social media um, than I really ever think about. Oh, I have more. Those are just the two that like... I'm willing to like very quickly put out there because it's platforms, just platforms. What other platforms are you on and how many accounts do you have on those platforms? Okay. So Instagram, I have four, I have four accounts that four I switched instas. through. Okay. I have four Instas. So I have, you don't have to share, you don't have to share. I, them yeah. I have my two business and then I have my real estate team and a, TV show that we do, but okay. we haven't been doing since COVID. Okay. Um, and then obviously YouTube, which is like doubles up on those, like yeah. same thing. You double up on, so eight there. And then we go to Facebook. I have two Facebooks, personal, professional, a, and three more pages there. So what's that put me up to? 12? <laughs> and then, fingers. yeah, I'm like 12. <laughs> And then just also, you know, of course I have a LinkedIn profile, but that is, I don't use it. But there's just like what hidden profiles. Uh, I have a Twitter, but I don't use it. It's like I follow it for a few news things. Like I follow Donald Trump just because like literally I think all of us had to <laughs> basically. Oh, like no. <laughs> I, did, I did it just because I needed to be like up in the news and be like, what is he saying? Um, mm. Like, sure, because sure. that was his like preferred news media. I will like, circle back to that in a second. But okay. Twitter and then TikTok. I'm guessing. I have a TikTok, but I don't use it. It's just like I, I deleted it, and then of course my like family and friends send me TikToks, and the fact that it would like open up in a browser. Oh yeah. What, I, that annoyed me, and so I just downloaded it again so that I could see it, so that I could be like, haha, that's funny, <laughs> to my, like, sister and stuff like that. But I do so, use it occasionally. You've got a lot. You, I, I now think we have probably have about the same number of uh, social media accounts that we manage or mm -hmm. endure, right? So the idea of getting exhausted just from the number of accounts that you have totally makes sense yeah um and i do think that there are certain demographics within each platform um for sure mm -hmm. uh, but let's circle back to the tool the idea of the tool and twitter in particular okay. <laughs> oh okay i won't talk about twitter i also want to check are you on next door no okay good because i don't want next door um I'm like, I have no idea what it so is. Twitter Don't... and Donald Trump. Um, I feel as though Trump is one of the savviest social media users in modern history. He's also one of the heaviest purveyors of misinformation and <laughs> outright lies in modern history. And I think... I find it fascinating that knowing how social media works mm -hmm. and knowing that he's a liar, um, you still follow him because you're interested in what he's saying, even though like what he's saying, you know, it has very little bearing on what actually happens in your day-to-day -day life. 
but it does have a lot of bearing on what people are going to be talking about during exactly the day. yeah i mean <laughs> i don't know how i typically get my news is i'm not a like i'll read through some articles but what i do every morning this is part of like my coffee yeah. in the morning is yeah. um and making my smoothie is I listen to Up First on NPR. Okay. And so, like, it's a quick 15-minute segment. They highlight a couple things that have happened previous day or happening that day. And love so that's that. how... I love NPR. Watch NPR. Yes. Uh, donate to NPR donate if you can. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that's my little snippet. But they they always are like, Donald Trump. Donald Trump tweeted, Donald Trump tweeted, Donald Trump tweeted. And so yeah. that's literally like all I'm like, let me just go in and see what the craziness is. And I think the thing is about social media, which before we talked about it is like, oh, it's a good thing. And then this, I'm like, oh, it's bad. But that share button, it's too easy. Oh. It is too easy to share content. Like, okay. it's like that double edged sword of like, my friend, a uh, mortgage lender that grew a following in her business to 50,000 people in a few years because people sharing her content. And then you have Donald Trump, Donald Trump or other fake news, um, yeah. misinformation that can just be shared so widely and so I, quickly. I agree with you that it's too easy to share but probably for different reasons. Mm -hmm. um, regarding uh, purveyors of misinformation in particular, I don't think it's or like the kind of organic reach, the organic sharing, that's the real, real problem. I think mm -hmm. it's when people create like robots uh, or programs to go in um, or fake profiles to go in and artificially inflate um, likes and shares and saves and what have you. Uh, yeah. That kind of like pushes that content into the forefront of the entire platform. Mm -hmm. That's where I think there gets to be such a significant problem. And I think it's also a concern that as someone who does pay for advertisements, mm -hmm. I don't know if um, the, the people that are seeing my advertisements are real people or robots, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so I do think it falls on the social media platform. And you're getting charged? I am getting, and you're I'm getting, paying for that. Yeah. You're paying for those robots to look. Well, yes. and um, everybody listening, Jerome ran for a That's true. For office. an office. And um, I'm sure, and I know for myself, when you're creating an ad, and I know for political ads as well, because I was helping out with the campaign a little bit this year. Yeah. Um, you're policed. Like, there's very yeah. specific things that you have to answer. And the same thing for real estate. Like, I cannot. So, uh, in my business, obviously, it's like, if I wanted to target a demographic, right? Mm -hmm. Say I wanted to, I don't know, let me say I want people to see ads for Key West real estate in Manhattan, New York that are ages 40 to 60. Yeah. Because I'm like, I know that demographic has money. Let's just say sure. this hypothetically. I can't do that because that is discrimination based on age. Oh. That is age discrimination because technically anybody can buy a house from 18 plus. So if I set an ad and I change that age demographic, that is discrimination. I can lose my license for that. Oh, that is fascinating. Um, one, where we are very interested in discrimination on this channel. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I am only really familiar with promoting posts related to um, political concerns. I did not realize that there were different um, like filters and tools available for different industries. Mm -hmm. Like if you go in to create a Facebook ad, there's several things it will ask is, there's like a little drop down. Obviously, I know that it says housing, and then sure. I think 
Um, the next one is like po political is also on there as yeah. well because they they have set up some parameters of like you have to be in these set parameters and one that is set is the for my industry is the age restriction i can't change it i can only that one is set and it says 18 plus this is really fascinating. This is a little bit more information about this tool that we all use that uh, I don't think anyone really knows the full workings of. Mm -hmm. um, I think we should take a quick coffee break, relax, okay. have a sip, and then we'll be right back. Perfect. Listen, this is bottomless coffee. It's just not in our nature to dwell on the negative. Though we originally intended to spend more time talking about the negative impacts of social media on our mental health, after this coffee break, we pivot and instead talk about how you can use the tool to support the people and organizations that you care about. All right. Recording. We're synced. Mm -hmm. Okay, that coffee was delicious. Thank it you, was... Paul. I know. Um, let's talk about the good stuff you know we do try to make sure people leave these episodes feeling inspired and empowered mm -hmm. and uh, i think the easiest thing to do is talk about how you can support a small business that is trying to make it on social media without paying uh instagram or facebook for that advertising space mm -hmm. um so what do you do you ever like encourage your followers to like and share and save and, and whatever else like do you train your cut your people that way when we were doing our tv show or i call it a tv show it was like a facebook show um okay. and it that. was it was called keys island life okay. um because our my real estate team is keys island team and so we just have a theme so um, i need to add them is it like at keys island team Yes, if you could, on Facebook, okay. Keys Island Team and Keys Island Life. Okay. Excuse me. Um, on Jeez. Facebook. And both of those, our show was, it was so much fun. And what it was is it was me and my business partner, Miriam. We would go out and interview small businesses hmm. in Key West or the Lower Keys or in the Keys and showcase our island life to people so okay. that people knew what it was like and the things to do when they came to Key West. Yeah. And in that, at the end of every episode, it was like, please comment, like, share, and subscribe. Um, and so, yes, training that audience to share our posts and get that engagement with people. Um, and of course, I mean, there was a couple of times that we would boost a post to get a little bit sure. more engagement, but that was in the early days. Um, so do you, have you ever broken it down or taken a look to see like, if someone likes a post, how much more engagement does that give you than if someone like shares a post, for instance? Definitely sharing is the most, if somebody shares it, that gets us the most engagement. And one of our okay. posts that did really well was shared by another person that is in the Keys that has 200,000 plus followers, has sure. been f building her following for years and years and years and years. And she shared a post of ours and we um, got a ton of engagement on that one. So if so. you like someone, or if you like uh, the content that you're seeing, you should like it, and then you should share it. Exactly. Conversely, if it's... and comment, it's all oh, it's and comment. It's okay. all of them. You and the other thing, and the way Facebook algorithm and Instagram algorithms work is, the posts that have more likes, comments, and then comment replies. So if you get a comment on your social media, you. The fact that you go back and re-engage with those people, that 
bumps up the algorithm so that it shows it to more people because it's more engaging. Oh, that's really good because I am, well, one, I'm really bad about that. If someone just comments, thanks, I'm like, you know, in my mind, I'm like, you're welcome. And I keep scrolling. Mm -hmm. um, but if someone takes a minute to give like real substantive feedback or see how much they appreciate it, then I'm far more likely to go in and reply. So I think maybe relating to comments, like leave a good comment. Mm -hmm. Like a little hearts are fine, emojis are cute. Um, but if you are, if you want to really help that business, then you could leave a positive review yes. in there. That would be really nice. Um, you could, you know, leave, say that it's inspiring. You can say, oh yeah, Paul's amazing or something like that. Yeah. That's, um, that's an actual like interaction. Mm -hmm. that helps the business. That's and I think that the, let's follow that up with, I think that that's something that is good about, can be good about social media. I'm going to sneeze. I'm like, I have a bunch of flowers in front of me. I think oh, I'm at my parents' house in North Carolina. And I think somebody brought my mom flowers. <laughs> well, you're allowed to sneeze. We will um, be for the audience, but if you sneeze, it's okay. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Something that is good about social media is, you know, you do get to see what your friends are doing in the world. Um, oh, that's true. Where in the world is Jerome? Is your game? Where in, yeah, where is the, <laughs> where in the world is Jerome? Uh, just backstory, everybody, just throwing this out there. Jerome works at uh, Blockbuster. There's only like two in existence. He's the CEO. He's the CFO. <laughs> he is the chief marketing manager. She's great. Her employees love her. Look her up, Jerome Paul has at no Blockbuster. Idea what I'm ever do, what I'm doing, and so there is a narrative in Paul's mind <laughs> <laughs> that but she works for Blockbuster. I actually used to really love Blockbuster, so I don't hate the story. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we um, we're able to engage with people that we don't get to see a lot, yeah. like me and you. I haven't seen you in Too quite long. some time three, okay. four years. Now, you live at least. on the other side of the country. Yes, we do, we do live quite far away. But um, if not for social media, you might not know where, yeah. where I'm living, what I'm doing, that I'm running for office, mm -hmm. that I'm putting on a podcast. Um, yeah, there are use. It's a useful tool in a lot of respects. And it's and it goes back into supporting your friends, supporting, yeah. and that's what's great is we can give you support and be yeah. there for people when otherwise it would be hard if we, you know, you live in Minnesota and I live in Florida and, you know, you're right. Say you're running for office again. And it's like, Oh, I share your posts and say, Oh, my friend that, yeah. because I have a different group of friends that, you know, I probably know some people in Minnesota that you don't know Very that true. might see, Oh, he knows somebody let's oh he's in my district i should maybe look into him and see what he supports because my friend is friends with him and so yeah it's that the, support the there. same if you um have a, a post relating to key west or what have you i actually love key west uh, it's mm -hmm. one of my favorite places to visit and it's sad that i never get there anymore um but yeah i should be more proactive in posting about key west than the like I know. I need to send you the picture. I think it's literally maybe the only picture that me and you have together. Oh, yeah. How only... long have you been sitting on this photo? It's on Instagram. It is on oh, Instagram. Okay. Um, it was after the women's march that we did several yeah. years ago. Yeah. I'm going to send it to you. I'm going to retag you in it. Okay. Um, well, you can just send it to me. You don't need to tag me in it. I'll just send <laughs> it to know. you. I'm like, I don't know what, what that photo is. Key West it's, is a fun place. <laughs> I know. It is definitely a B-U-T-T. -T. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's amazing. Well, but, you know what, Paul? Um, I think we've touched on the best ways to support each other and businesses mm -hmm. using social media. Um, and earlier in the episode, we talked about... Um, did we talk about how not to use social media? Because, I think like, we should briefly touch on it. Yeah. <laughs> just, just like, like the opposite of the good is the bad. Like, yeah. Do not comment and share on posts that are like spreading misinformation. Yeah. And the like. 
And also just like, or hate, or... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Bullying. Report that. You can, yeah, if you see that, report it. That is why there's a feature there. Um, I 100% agree with that. Um, reporting misinformation in particular, like if, if, if I'm even on Facebook, and I really try to stay off of it, um, unless I'm responding to a comment or unless I'm, I'm producing like something values driven, something good for the world. Mm -hmm. um, if I see misinformation, I am quick to report it. Because unless I'm mistaken, there's no negative repercussion for reporting misinformation like incorrectly. No, I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, it's Reporting you're like, no, this is wrong. Yeah. <laughs> for instance, in the 2020 general election, someone in a separate group chat was like, uh, they sent a screenshot. People love sending screenshots. Oh, yeah. Um, and it was of someone else's post about them telling someone who spoke Spanish that they were not allowed to vote simply because they spoke Spanish. And I was like, you need to report that immediately. And mm -hmm. they were hesitant to do so. And so, you know, I logged my happy self right on in. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, if you're not going to do it, okay. <laughs> boop, 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 report. <laughs> yeah, that Which was is... probably one of the last times I logged into Facebook, like intentionally went out mm -hmm. seeking to log into Facebook. Yeah. I wish I could not. I wish I didn't have to all the time. I wish yeah. my business didn't require it but it does and so I do have to engage but I try to use it as the most positive in the most positive way yes. so and that should be like I think our takeaway our final takeaway if you're going to use social media use it in the most positive way mm -hmm. use it and as if, a tool for good and if it is something like if you do feel yourself I mean obviously I I'm like oh I get anxiety and stuff with it but you know, it's very easy to just, like, turn off your phone. Just, like, click out of it. Just set it away. If it is if it is something, like, and you are able to disconnect yourself from it. I know my sister has, she's not on Facebook anymore. She is, like, she still has her profile, but she has taken herself off. She was like, I just can't. She's like, it's too much, and I don't need it right now. And... I think that's admirable, and if any of our friends do it, like send me your mailing address. If like, yeah, like if you if I see somebody there, I have a lot of friends that are like, "Here's my mailing address. If you need to reach out to me, send me a letter." Like, if you need to disconnect, total respect for yeah. that. And then, 100%. if if you're also a friend that's like, you try to get off, and then you. Uh, relapse and you're back on there and you need somebody to like scold you for getting back on I'm oh my like, gosh <laughs> you're like you get are back off <laughs> get back off <laughs> I'm like oh. I see your addiction get back off take you go are repent your amazing. sins thank you <laughs> <laughs> I'm like okay we're gonna close this up before it spirals <laughs> <laughs> you're amazing Thank uh, you. One more time. What's your Instagram tag? Uh, the two I have yeah. at P Brooks Realtor. P Brooks and, Realtor. Mm -hmm. And then I have at Insta underscore Brooks. Awesome. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. We enjoyed the coffee for sure. Uh, see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. That's it for this episode of Bottomless Coffee. Please remember to use your social media powers for good. We're upgrading the experience at bottomlesscoffeepodcast.com all the time, so go check it out. We've even got a shop now, y'all. Special thanks goes out to our Patreon community members. Every Patreon subscriber has been entered into a drawing for an item from that new Bottomless Coffee shop. But don't worry. If you become a Patreon supporter now, then you can still get in on the giveaway. Just go to patreon.com slash bottomlesscoffee and become a community member. Thanks everybody. See you next time.